I now invite the Honourable Secretary General of the Organisation of Islamic Countries, His Excellency Mr. Hassan Brahim Taha, for his statement. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وبه نستعين إن شاء الله التس إكسلانس مدام ومسيو إلمي أغريب تو دابور دسبرمي أمون نوم پرسونيل إسلوي دو لأرغانيزاسيون دو لأكوبراسيون إسلاميك مي سنسير ومسيمان إما غراتيتود أو غوورنمان أو پوبل دو لأرببليك إسلاميك دو باكستان بور لأكوي شالرو que nous a été réservé et pour la sérieuse coopération de la soigneuse coordination que nous avons constatée dans la préparation de cette 48e session du Conseil des ministres des Affaires étrangères de l'OCI. Tout en félicitant la République islamique du Pakistan pour sa présidence de cette importante session, je tiens à vous témoigner ma reconnaissance pour son engagement résolu en faveur de l'organisation de la coopération islamique et pour ses rapports précieux dans le renforcement de l'action islamique commune, ce qui ne manquera pas de garantir le succès de la présente session. C'est pour nous un réel motif de satisfaction de voir cette 48e session coïncider avec la célébration du 75e anniversaire de l'indépendance de la République islamique du Pakistan tout en lui adressant nos meilleurs voeux. Nous partageons cette célébration et la félicitons pour les réalisations de son peuple et pour les défis remportés à la faveur d'une forte volonté et d'une détermination sans faille. Nous lui souhaitons progrès et prospérité continue. Je voudrais également saluer la République du Niger pour les efforts ô combien louables déployés tout au long de son mandat à la présidence de la 47e session du Conseil des ministres des Affaires étrangères de l'OCI, dans une conjoncture difficile marquée par la pandémie de la Covid-19, un mandat couronné d'un franc succès et qui a donné un nouvel élan à l'action islamique commune. Je ne saurais omettre en cette circonstance de rendre un vivant hommage au Royaume d'Arabie saoudite, pays du siège et président de la 14e conférence islamique au sommet, pour son soutien permanent aux activités de l'organisation et au travail du secrétariat général, sous la généreuse sollicitude du serviteur de deux centres mosquées, le roi Salman bin Abdelaziz Al Saoud, et de son Altesse royale, le prince Mohammed bin Salman, son prince héritier et vice-premier ministre, puisse Allah le préserver. Altesse, Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, qu'il me soit permis de vous retirer ainsi qu'à vous au gouvernement mes remerciements et ma gratitude pour le soutien que vous avez apporté en assumant les fonctions du secrétaire général de notre prestigieuse organisation et de vous rassurer de mon engagement résolu à œuvrer dans le respect des dispositions de la charte de notre organisation, à défendre les causes de la Oumma islamique et à me conformer aux décisions des résolutions adoptées par le Sommet islamique et le Conseil des ministres des Affaires étrangères. Altesse, Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, je voudrais souhaiter la bienvenue aux distingués représentants des États d'organisations internationales et régionales, partenaires de l'Organisation de coopération islamique. Leur présence témoigne de l'intérêt qu'ils accèdent au rôle de notre organisation dans la contribution à la paix, à la sécurité et au développement dans le monde. L'OCI se félicite du dialogue et des liens de coopération qu'elle entretient avec eux. Altesse, Excellences, Mesdames et Messieurs, notre présente session se tient sous le thème des partenariats pour l'unité, la justice et le développement. Un thème qui vient à point nommé refléter les aspirations de nos populations et leurs attentes vis-à-vis -vis de l'organisation de coopération islamique en cette conjoncture délicate dans laquelle 
la Oumma islamique se trouve confrontée à moult défis politiques, sécuritaires et de développement. Aujourd'hui, la cause palestinienne, question centrale pour l'organisation, continue de se heurter à des défis, à des défis dangereux dont tout particulièrement la persistance des politiques d'occupation israélienne fondées sur la colonisation, la judaïsation de la ville de Quds et l'agression contre les lieux sacrés, en particulier la mosquée de l'Aqsa. Outre la poursuite de meurtres, de confiscation de terres, de la démolition, démolition des maisons, des arrestations arbitraires, de la discrimination raciale, de l'apartheid et du nettoyage ethnique à l'encontre du peuple palestinien qui constituent dans leur ensemble une violation flagrante des législations, conventions et résolutions internationales pertinentes. Aussi, la persistance de tels crimes et agressions israéliens contre le peuple palestinien, sa terre et ses lieux saints nous commandent-elles de renforcer l'esprit de solidarité et d'action islamique commune et de, roubler et de redoubler davantage d'efforts diplomatiques auprès des instances internationales en faveur des droits du peuple palestinien et de contrer avec fermeté la responsabilité toute tentative visant à changer le statut historique et juridique de la ville d'Al-Quds en application des résolutions pertinentes adoptées par les sommets islamiques et des conseils ministériels successifs. La question du Jammu et Cachemire est une autre question juste qui attend une solution depuis longtemps et qui nous préoccupe profondément au vu des développements qu'elle connaît, particulièrement à la suite des actions illégales et unilatérales entreprises par l'Inde le 5 août 2019 visant à modifier le statut du Jammu et Cachemire occupé par l'Inde. Au mois de novembre dernier, une délégation de haut niveau du secrétariat général de l'OCI, conduite par le secrétaire général adjoint aux affaires politiques, représentant spécial pour, le, pour Jammu et Cachemire, avec la participation du secrétaire général adjoint aux affaires humanitaires, culturelles et sociales, a effectué une visite officielle au Pakistan et à Nazat, Jammu et Cachemire, dans le cadre de la mise en œuvre du mandat confié au secrétariat général en vertu de la résolution 1047-Paul sur les différences de Jammu et Cachemire adoptée par le Conseil des ministres des Affaires étrangères. Le rapport de cette mission est soumis à votre attention. L'OCI est ainsi appelé à redoubler d'efforts en vue de soutenir le droit des peuples du Jammu et Cachemire, y compris son droit à l'autodétermination, conformément aux résolutions du Conseil de sécurité des Nations unies. Les développements de cette question seront examinés par le groupe de contact sur Jammu et Cachemire, qui se réunira, qui se réunira ici à Islamabad en marge de nos précédentes assises. En ce qui concerne l'Afghanistan, j'ai suivi tous les aspects liés et la mise en œuvre des résolutions issues de la 17e session ministérielle extraordinaire tenue à Islamabad le 19 décembre 2021. À cet égard, j'ai assuré avec mon envoyé spécial pour l'Afghanistan la coordination nécessaire avec la Banque islamique de développement qui a gracieusement préparé le cadre juridique et la structure du fonds fiduciaire décidé par le Conseil ministériel. Le fonds sera officiellement lancé en marge de cette réunion. D'autre part, j'ai dépêché mon envoyé spécial en Afghanistan. Il a eu des entretiens élargis avec un certain nombre de ministres du gouvernement en place à Kaboul. Concernant les efforts de l'organisation dans les domaines humanitaires, politiques et économiques, je soumets à votre attention un rapport spécial sur les progrès réalisés dans la mise en œuvre de la résolution sur la situation humanitaire en Afghanistan et sur les aspects liés à cette première visite. Je continuerai donc à dialoguer avec les autorités en place en Afghanistan, avec les partenaires internationaux, dans le but de réaliser la paix, 
la sécurité et le développement dans ce pays membre de l'organisation. Pour ce qui est de l'agression de la République de l'Arménie contre la République d'Azerbaïdjan, et bien que d'autres tripartites concluent entre l'Azerbaïdjan, l'Arménie et la Fédération de Russie le 10 novembre 2020, aient mis fin aux hostilités, la République d'Azerbaïdjan a exprimé sa préoccupation face au non-respect pour la République d'Arménie par la République d'Arménie de ses obligations telles que stipulées dans l'accord tripartite. Le secrétariat général, qui a constamment confirmé le soutien de l'organisation au règlement du conflit conformément aux décisions et résolutions du Conseil islamique, du Conseil des ministres et du Conseil de sécurité des Nations unies, continuera de suivre cette question avec intérêt. Le situation en Yémen still causes deep concern for our organization, which has committed itself to support Yemen's unity, sovereignty, and independence and territorial integrity, alleviating the human suffering and the conflict on the basis of international law, namely the, the initiative of the, of the Gulf states and the executive mechanisms at the conclusion of the Conference of di National Dialogue in Yemen and the resolutions of international legality, especially the resolution 20 at the conclusion of the Conference of di National Dialogue in Yemen and the resolutions of international legality, especially the resolution 22-16-2015 of the United Nations Security Council. In this context, the General Secretariat of the OIC salutes and hails the idea that the General Secretariat hails the initiative announced by the Ministerial Council of the Gulf States to organize Yemen-Yemeni consultations at the Saudi Council in Riyadh at the end of the present month, an initiative that will make it possible to fill the gap between the Yemeni brothers and to engage in an action to stop the blood seed, the, the, uh, the blood selling and to continue the action and for the stability and security in the region. In this context, we renew our appreciation to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for its unremitting efforts and initiatives to contribute to expediting a peaceful and lasting solution to the Yemeni crisis. I also reiterate the uh, th thanks and appreciation to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and the Emirates for their solidarity with our organization in the face of the condemned attacks by the Houthi militants against civilians and civilian targets. Over the past period, developments in Libya, in Sudan and Somalia have been sub a subject of continued consideration of the General Secretariat, which encouraged all parties concerned to adopt dialogue, and we today encourage them to redouble their efforts to overcome differences and uh, lay the basis for stability and peace, for development, and to ensure that the interest of their peoples prevails. With regard to Syria, the General Secretary continues supporting the efforts of the United Nations to achieve a peaceful solution to the crisis in conformity with the Declaration of Geneva and the resolution of the Security Council. With regard to Iraq, the convening in October 2021 of anticipated early elections represent a positive element that we have registered and that we hail. As you all know, the political security challenges and developments faced by the Sahel countries, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger, and the Lake Chad Basin, Cameroon, Chad, Niger, and Nigeria, as well as Central Republic of Africa, Mozambique, and Guinea, reflects an important interest for the OIC. We underline the need to increase efforts to achieve peace and 
stability in these regions. And we call on the member states and the OIC institutions, as well as international partners, to help these regions to face up to the challenges confronting them. It is within this framework within to give a new launch for our organization in Africa, including in the Lake Chad and Africa, that I paid a visit in the current month to Chad, Cameroon, Niger, and Senegal. And uh, I had an opportunity to discuss with the leaders in those countries uh, regarding these issues and ways and means to strengthen the OIC support to those countries. On the other hand, the delega delegations, high-level delegations from the OIC General Secretariat, led by the Assistant Secretary for Political Affairs, Dr. Dubey, paid a visit to Abuja to hold discussions with the leaders of the Commission of the OCDAO on ways and means to strengthen cooperation and coordination of efforts so as to contribute to peace, security, and development in the region. Strengthening the positive role of organization in Africa requires as well the designation of special envoy. To this effect, I recommend to your August Council to designate Dr. Nasiru Baku Arifari, former Minister of Foreign Affairs of Benin, as special envoy of the OIC General Secretariat for Africa, and I hope that he will benefit of your support. Your Highnesses, Excellencies, Ladies and Gentlemen, the Republic of Bosnia is uh, facing a, a preoccupying situation due to certain Serb parties and uh, to their uh, involvement and offensive, and this requires support for Bosnia's governor to help it preserve its territorial uh, unity, its stability and sovereignty and prosperity. Our organization expresses as well its full support to the efforts in favor of a global and just uh, resolution to the Cypriot issue and its support with the Turkish Cypriot Muslims in conformity with the current resolutions of the OIC. Highnesses, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the well-being and defense of the human rights of Muslim communities in the non-member states in conformity with the principles and objectives as included in the Charter of the organization form a priority also in our action. We continue to so, uh, increasing our efforts to this end through visits and dialogue with the leaders of the concerned parties. In this context, we express our profound concern with regard to the situation of Rohingya, and we call on the international community to act in an efficient manner, an urgent manner, to ensure proper conditions for the voluntary return of the uh, people as the refugees, the Rohingyas, to their original homeland. We register our uh, support for judicial action with the International Court of Justice with, for uh, the recovering of uh, uh, listenings in support of the Rohingyas to put an end to all the forms of violence against them. I should like on this occasion to pay a special tribute to Gambia, to the Republic of Gambia, for their front role, front land role uh, for, in support of the affairs at the meeting of the committee today against the violation of human rights uh, in, against the Rohingyas would allow us to find a solution and to face up to uh, the offensive in this regard. Honorable participants, according to the official reports of the Observatory of Islamophobia, in the OIC, the reputation of the, of the Muslim community in a number of countries is subject to defamation at, the, at a time when action is increasing against Muslims due to the rise of extreme rights. All Islamic states are called upon to act together against uh, such uh, a situation and take necessary measures to fight against uh, racist and xenophobic actions at all levels and to establish pillars of security and peace. In this regard, we 
Uh, rely on the member states to act together with the General Secretariat against Islamophobia. On the other hand, we need to collaborate with all the members of the international community to combat this phenomenon. It is with satisfaction that we have welcomed the adoption in 15th March by the General Assembly of the United Nations of a resolution designating the 15th of March of each year as an international day of the uh, fight against Islamophobia. We express the hope that it will contribute to favor a dialogue at the international level of a culture of tolerance and peace. Our fight against terrorism is also an absolute priority for our organization. In order to face up to this uh, phenomenon, we have established a multidimensional uh, strategy on the basis of international law and the Convention of the OIC on Anti-Terrorism Act, including the question, uh, one of the issues that we, to which we attach special uh, attention, I would like to draw attention to strengthening uh, cooperation between the member states uh, in culture and civilization. This is a subject of consultations that the General Secretary is undertaking with the member states and international and regional bodies. That uh, partners in this field. Uh, this is the object of uh, active action in this regard. Well, I would like to avail of the opportunity to congratulate the UAE for having hosted the, expo the exhibition 2022, which has been the subject of so consistent cooperation between the member states. Your Highnesses, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in the field of social development and protection of values and institution in regarding the institution of marriage and family, the General Secretary is getting ready to convene other meetings of experts to achieve the discussion of the project of the Convention of the OIC on the rights of children in Islam, a project that was elaborated with the Permanent Commission an independent commission of human rights, IPHCR. With regard to the uh, freedom of women and uh, 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 empowering women, I'd like to hail the Republic of uh, the Arab world of Egypt, uh, the host country of the Organization for the Right of Women, for having allocated a special uh, building to headquarter to host the organization. At the level of the capacity building of youth, I would like to pay special tribute to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for having decided to welcome and host the fifth session of Islamic conference of ministers of youth and sports that was uh, uh, regrettably delayed uh, due to the COVID-19. This general secretary continues its coordination with the Saudi authorities with regard to set a special date for the said conference. In terms of the media, the organization have uh, sped up its uh, investments uh, in new media to enlighten the member states and the public and international public opinion regarding the vital issues for the Islamic Kuma and for the Muslim communities in non-member states, as well as to educate the world about its uh, projects and efforts in support of the least developed countries to face up uh, to the propagation of the coronavirus pandemic. In the humanitarian field, the OIC General Secretary have been uh, developed further over the past few years in collaboration with the international bodies. In this regard, I would like to thank all the member states and institutions of the OIC that have contributed to supporting humanitarian action of our organization, particularly the Islamic Solidarity Fund and the humanitarian partners for most of which I would like to quote the King Salman, Salman uh, Center for Humanitarian Action. The Chair of Secretary has put in enormous efforts to help the member states, the least developed countries, to face up to the pandemic of the coronavirus, to adopt and adopted multiple initiatives in this regard, including the opening of a special fund for the reception of accounts of contributions in support of the 
World Health Organization. In this regard, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has made a 20 million real donation in support of this fund for the acquisition of vaccines in coordination with the Salman Center for Humanitarian Action. I wish to avail of the occasion to launch an appeal to the member states to contribute further to this account to finance the purchase of vaccines for the benefit of the developed countries in the OIC. Your Highnesses, Excellencies, and gentlemen, two years have passed by and we have not yet been able to get out of the COVID pandemic. Due to this pandemic, measures taken uh, uh, during this period our countries have faced economic difficulties and a drop of exportations of tourist activities. Based on this fact, the post-corona action occupies a special place in our action. In this regard, our organization has paid particular action for the implementation of these programs and economic projects in agriculture, in rural development, food security, employment and protection, and social protection and strengthening exchanges in trade and encouragement of investment in order to to ensure the realization of the objectives as announced in our action program OIC 2025, bearing in mind the importance of cooperation in the economic and trade fields between the member states and the framework of the implementation of the resolutions issued by your council to organize a forum on investment in Africa. I've paid accorded particular attention to this issue and I'm about to finalize the details of which I will inform you in due time. I'm happy to inform you also that the eighth session of the Islamic Conference of the OIC on food security and agricultural development held in Istanbul in the Republic of Turkey on 25th, 27th, October 2021 has given a new impetus to cooperation in the sector. The ministers have adopted three pro programs of the OIC for agricultural development and strategies such as uh, foodstocks and uh, rice and other products. Within the same framework, the OIC tourist uh, conference and labor uh, conference that will be held this year, respectively in Azerbaijan and the EU, UAE will allow the member states of our organization to take stock of the current situation in this, uh, this particular sector and to elaborate a common strategy such as to enable us to face up to the challenges and alleviate the adverse effects of the coronavirus on the sectors of uh, tourism and labor. Excellencies, Highnesses, the OIC has intensified its action in favor of strengthening cooperation between the member states in order to ensure the progress of his agenda in the field of science, technology, higher education, health, water, and environment as fundamental pillars of the strategy of the OIC for the eradication of poverty, of uh, disease, uh, illiteracy, and extremism. I'm happy, therefore, to recall that the second summit of the OIC on technology that was held online in June last has taken stock of the steps fulfilled by the member states in the field of technology and in their policies and national strategy in this field. Therefore, undoubtedly, uh, uh, providing a high quality level of uh, education will be the optimal means against uh, underdevelopment. The OIC plays an important role in the training of students of the member states. Allow me here to express my due thanks and gratitude to all the member states and organizations that give financial support to our universities, consecrate in consecration of greater solidarity and cooperation among the member states in the field of higher education, of programs of exchange in the member states.
member states to provide great, larger numbers of uh, scholarships for the members, for the students, particularly in the least developed countries. In the field of health, the General Secretariat, in collaboration with the competent, relevant organizations of the IOC, has adopted a traditionally well-approved uh, approach to help the member states face up to the adverse effects of the COVID-19. Uh, with the help of the steering committee on, on health, uh, of ministers of health, as well as the urgent, urgent affair, uh, measures taken by the ministers of foreign affairs. Secondly, an urgent financial support from the member states through the ISF and the group of the uh, development, uh, the IDB, and through action against uh, fallacious uh, media propaganda. Within the framework of legal convention and statutes adopted by the Islamic meetings and the Council of Foreign Ministers represents the framework such as to allow the organization to fulfill its action in conformity with the agreements signed by the member states. In this regard, I'd like to renew our call to the member states that have not yet yet signed or ratified the agreements concluded within the framework of the organization to do so, so that these mechanisms may be established and become operative. At the forefront of this document, I would like to note the charter of the organization, the statute of the organization for women's development and the Islamic organization for food security that are already operative, but there are still are other important institutions that have not seen their statutes entering into force, such as the Labour Centre and the Centre for Cooperation and Policy Support. Within the framework of reform of the General Secretariat, a study has been elaborated by the Public Administration Institute in collaboration with the General Secretariat. The study has led to the elaboration of a Planigram project for the General Secretariat, which are reflected in the annexes of my present report to this uh, August body. The General Secretariat, in relation of the resolution of the OIC Foreign Ministers Conference, has held expert group meetings to elaborate new rules and regulations and to amend certain procedural rules. The General Secretariat has elaborated a draft a resolution to govern the work of the COTA group and another one to govern the OIC offices abroad. The members of the committee and the statute and the rules of regulation of the OIC. Your Highnesses, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, the applications for observer status and consultative status are increasing day by day with the increasing number of uh, requests submitted by the General Secretary, received by the General Secretary by, from non-member states and international organizations and military organizations. We are gratified of this interest of these members, and I express the hope that uh, I will have your support to find the appropriate formula to, for the uh, granting of observer and consultative status for the applications where the are submitted by parties that meet the conditions in conformity with the mandate submitted to us by the 47th session and the Council of Foreign Ministers. The program for action 2025, as adopted by the former Council, constitutes an optimal framework that brings together the objectives and the activities on vital fields for the member states. Concerted efforts must be put in by all to implement effectively the set program. 
Friend. The programmes action must be finalised this year. I invite the member states to kindly support to CESRIC as soon as possible the statistical necessary data to fulfil this important exercise that will enable us to evaluate the progress of the implementation of the action programme for achieving the various objectives that I have just enumerated and to increase the capacity of the organization to face up to the challenges and help us move forward for the implementation of the necessary reforms of our organization and the various organs with the support and commitment of the member states. We all should rely on your financial support to the organization and its various organs so that they may implement and ensure the follow-up of all plans or programs as approved by your highnesses. We are confident that strengthening the role of the organization will support our common action and consecrate the spirit of solidarity between our member states. The General Secretary continues its efforts with the competent authorities in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for the implementation of rules and procedures of the areas of certain member states for which the government of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia has taken the initiative to settle their areas within the OIC, within the framework of this continued assistance to the organization. These areas represent an obstacle that prevent the organization from fulfilling its duties. These urgent commitments will be covered thanks to these donations and, will, and we call for further support underline that the General Secretary, within the framework of the implementation of recommendations of the Permanent Finance Committee, will work in consultation with the Chairman of the Permanent Finance Committee and Chairman of the Control Organization Office to, uh, to implement the uh, rules and regulations and the recommend, uh, recommendations, and we are actually looking into all the various items and uh, you know, to prepare for the budget in a manner that takes into consideration the opening of the budgetary uh, exercise in January and its closure in December in conformity with rules, regulations and procedures of the Permanent Finance Committee, CPR, as well as the rules and procedure of uh, the a finance control law. In this context, the General Secretary will spare no efforts to implement the recommendations of the finance control law issued by the 42nd session to strengthen transparency of the financial action. I should like to underline a proper and equitable geographic representation in the uh, candidacies of, for posts. We call for efforts to recruit larger representatives of uh, member states that are underrepresented to ensure an equitable geographic representation within the General Secretariat and subsidiary organs. Your Highnesses, Ladies and gentlemen, the world scene is subject to grave uh, developments due to the Russian and Russian-Ukrainian crisis. This crisis could possibly adversely affect the development of our countries, including uh, world, other, uh, other world countries. This conflict is likely to affect exports of these two countries that represent over 28 percent of the world's offers. In this regard, I should like to encourage the member states to go from the mere words to actions regarding the food strategy, the strategies, food security strategies concerning wheat, rice, you know, 
order to ensure the proper reserves at national, regional, and regional levels, and to ensure an, an acceptable level of self-sufficiency in the OIC. Thus, proceeding from the objectives as announced in the Charter of the OIC, and the OIC, particularly the contribution to the efforts for peace and stability, the General Secretariat has urged the concerned parties to work for a peaceful settlement of the Ukrainian crisis and to continue peaceful action in search of political solution that would guarantee lasting peace and security and preserve the security of populations. In conclusion, allow me to note that my address today to this August Council are only a summary of the efforts put in by the General Secretary of the OIC in the execution of the mission assigned to it. But further documentation, including my report on the activities of the organization, is submitted to for your attention, and you will agree with me that the challenges are multiple, and I'm convinced and confident that together we shall be able to contribute to face up to these challenges. May Allah Almighty guide our steps towards the achievement of our objectives for which we are working for the benefit of the Islamic Ummah and for the achievement of the aspirations of peace, unity, justice, and development in our member states and worldwide. I thank you for your kind attention. Wassalamu alaikum.